I'd heard about Wi-Fi before because when I was working at the School of Art and Design in Hull, I think I'd come across it. And, um, because again, when you work with students, you're trying to sort of, you know, pass on information about how they can get involved with other people, you know, get and get on with their work and stuff like that. And, and, get, and I think networks are really important to, to introduce people to new people and, and to, um, and on some of the networks I'm on, well, we're on in Hull, a lot of people post jobs on those networks as well. So one of the it's one of the ways of actually get being alerted to opportunities. Um, there's several networks in Hull. There's um, well, there's Harry, which uh, Sarah's from. There's Jackie. I don't know what. <laughs> Jackie used to be. Jackie, oh yeah, Jackie. Yeah, sorry, but Jackie used to be the dean of Hull School of Art and Science. She's now. I don't know if you're the you, you're one involved. Of the yeah, you're one of the directors yeah. of the co-op. It's actually an art co-op. <laughs> really, I find that really interesting because it's the structure. Uh, it has a, um, mm -hmm. It's a cooperative structure, which I think is quite rare, but also it's a very different way of working to the corporate top-down sort of pyramid structure you normally get. And it's doing very well there in, in Hong. And um, We've also got the Lockdown Still Alive, which was funded by Wi-Fi, and, and I was a part of that during lockdown as well. Um, I've also been part of other networks um, during lockdown, which have been more focused. So I don't know about intersectional. When you talk about intersectional, it means sort of um, a mixture of everything, really, in terms of it could be used as in terms of the diversity of the art practices that people have got but also say like I'd say you know I could be into, call myself part of a women's network or a black network or a, um, I don't know different there's different types of networks I could be part of um, if you want to include the whole your whole self you know I'm even part of crochet and knitting networks because I do crochet I do knitting and crochet pottery um and lockdown actually provided a big good opportunity for all of that the one thing i found strange with wiban was it's it's not a physical operation it's all online so that was quite difficult to get used to it's not based in an office so when it so now it's here but it, it's in the ether really you know it's all, but it's got a website a really good website that barney has um has used his skills to to, to perfect and uh, but being part of it really drew me into being part of the art world again because I think after leaving my job in 2018 I was sort of floating about I was doing I wasn't really I call myself an artist but I wasn't really doing anything and it gave me an opportunity to be able to help and support other people um, especially to um, and to look for, because the, the remit was specifically look for uh, artists of colour, black artists, Asian artists, artists from outside the, you know, the European norm, if you see what I mean. And, and it's something that I have, you know, always been interested in anyway, even when I was, you know, working in school of art and design, because I, I did even to try and introduce students to, I used to take them to the library, and go through all the books there that we did have on artists from all over the world. And um, and point that even though most of the students we had were mostly European in um, in the art school, and that did always worry me actually that students of colour didn't apply to art colleges. And that, you know, where were they? What were they doing? You know, and I think there is this issue about if you come from a um, a diasporic family, um, you're not encouraged to do art because you, your parents will say, well, that's not going to, you're not going to earn any money. You're not going to, you know, be able to make a living. So a lot of Asians um, um, and African parents will encourage their their children to go into, well, finance, <laughs> and that is finance now, but it used to be law or being doctors or being some sort of professional that you can, you know, 
but being an artist was not seen as being professional but then so I had to hunt around and I wanted to the remit was to find artists from Yorkshire and I suppose the process was a bit um determined by who we were you know Yang uh is based in Sheffield he's Chinese mix uh, I'm based in Hull you know I'm Nigerian which didn't then um uh, Zanib is Asian, South Asian. So her, and I, I found um, Zanib really interesting because she did talk about lived experience with the women she worked with who used to do things like henna painting mm. and craft. So that, those sort of art practices would cons be considered more like craft. But, you know, so there'd be, you know, if you go to any community gathering in a community centre, it'd be someone doing henna or someone doing um, face painting even. I mean, that's, you know, that's a, another thing. But various forms of art that are not necessarily considered professional art. So that's what you mean by lived it. Because when you grow up in a community, you might learn certain techniques. I mean, all of us, I learned knitting at home. You know, that's how I grew up. My dad taught me to knit, actually, for me. But... Uh, so this took, well, it was across the dad. So, you know, he, he was English, he was, he was European. But, you know, it's this, it's this valuing art across the spectrum. So things like, you know, maybe indigo dyeing, so for instance, that's a craft. It's also couched with a lot of sort of colonial headaches as well, because it, it basically, you know, it was, People who were enslaved were forced to work on plantations, you know, in, the, in Asia and in Africa as well, and uh, various other places. Um, there's also, you know, like things like spinning, weaving, those things happened in Yorkshire. And again, people were very low paid, and those things weren't considered high art, so to speak, unless you go to silk, you know, you go to the high end where. You're making stuff for the Queen, so for instance, or whatever. But you know, the same thing happens in art colleges. You get this split between craft and art. Mm -hmm. You know, the craft bit in Hull was actually more effy than HE. So you have this split between further education and higher education. So you know, so you know, I've always found that sort of like, you know, that, that shouldn't be there necessarily. But we were able to talk about all these things with our group because we were all artists of colour and we were able to get out these frustrations, you know, and say, yes, those those um, henna painting women are artists because what they produce for the weddings is absolutely amazing, you know. And also the the um, adire or the batik of the African dyers who used um, indigo again, um that's amazing as well and then um so i looked for artists i found actually a black woman in sheffield who was doing silversmithing and the funny thing was about her because at the same time we were doing this beyond the obvious finding artists in yorkshire a lot of artists were being plucked out of yorkshire and elsewhere because of black lives matter because the the emphasis was on you know, something's got to be done about, you know, black people being treated really badly in terms of, you know, being half killed by the police, but also within the arts, within every sphere, it's all about sort of, where are the black artists? You know, where are the black lecturers? All the way up to the top as well. So, because I've not come across, um, still actually in Yorkshire, no, I did actually. I came across two black lecturers who used to teach art in Leeds, but they're now retired. So there is an issue there, you know, there's problems there. So this publication, which is a small way of just sort of introducing um, a few of the artists in in um, around Yorkshire. So basically we did have to choose who we knew in a sense, which isn't a fair way of choosing you know, which is, is in the criticism of the fact. Um, so some things were um, having, we, you have to sort of like just 
being proactive, really. You have to positively discriminate, I suppose, in, in what they, how they used to get, you know, more women into jobs, more black people into jobs, more disabled people into jobs, create, you know, a positive discrimination from a process in a job. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so the process has been quite arduous in a sense because it's taken so long because I've had to deal with academia, which I've not, you know, and all the sort of the, the paperwork and the, you know, that sort of um, writing. And I also, I had to get into writing because on my bit, I had to actually write something. I was asked to write and I was like, so I almost wrote, wrote a CV as prose, you know, so I just pick out this, because also, because I'm so old, it's like, how far do I go back? Where do I start? And, uh, and I actually chose my favourite painting, because I'm a photographer, I trained as a photographer, but I chose painting because I really like painting, and I want to be a painter, really, but because I got into photography, I thought we got stuck in that, you know, and that's another thing, it's like, because photography for me was more lucrative than doing painting. So if I'd, you know, gone to art college at 16 and become a painter, I don't know where I would have been. I might be somewhere, you know, I might be a painter now, but I chose photography instead because it was, I was able more, I was more able to find a job. So, um, and also we got into sort of lived experience memories, working in museums, um, Zanin and Yuan both work in museums, they've had work in museums as installations. I'm, I haven't done that, I'm more like I do individual sort of works, that's what I mean. Some of the artists I chose, one of them is here, Janet Wallace, right there. Hi. She's an abstract Hi. and she's a quite a rare, because she's an abstract black artist. Now we have had a, a retrospective in England, Frank Bowling, and I don't know if he's died recently, I don't know if he's still alive, but he's in his 80s and he's only just become discovered, if you see what I mean. So he's had retrospectives now and his work seems really important, um, but he has to get to that age to be discovered. So what we're trying to do is actually promote younger artists and what's happened in the years after Black Lives Matter is they have had, they had um, in Scotland, they had um, 12 black women artists, an exhibition. And I was on a, a network that was telling me about all the, the African Caribbean uh, exhibitions that we go, I, I sort of looked for them, if you see what I mean, and anything that was, um, beyond the obvious, basically, beyond European, but also what the European artists were doing as well, because we were trying also, we asked a question about the environment, but it is true that if you, how do you look at the environment if you're still struggling to feed yourself, or you're still struggling to think about other issues? And that is one of the things about um, disadvantaged communities or communities that are not accessing resources is it's difficult to say that well you should you shouldn't be eating meat you shouldn't be doing this you shouldn't you know but you know you've got more things to think about so we did ask that question but uh, we didn't really and I've actually found there are other groups that are there's a, there's one group I'll, I'll, which is called land in our name and it it spells lion which is um, a group of black um, environmentalists down south, and they're trying to, they've got a bit of land, they're trying to get land and then grow things and then create a sort of eco village type set of communities. Um, another thing that came out of my artist, one of the artists I chose, is also in his 60s. Um, he'd had, it's Alistair, I mean, there is a bit written about him, and he had, a, he had some quite Quite a lot of racism when he was working and he, he actually you know sort of had to leave work and it was very difficult for him to go back to that um <clears throat> thinking about himself as a black artist because he was like i'm not a black artist i'm an artist and it's similar to the thing about women you know i'm not a woman artist i'm an artist 
And actually, we all want to just be considered as artists, not black, not, not a specific category. But if we look at who is in institutions, we do see there's a majority, there is a lack sometimes of certain people. So that, and that was quite, that was very difficult in a sense that there was a lot of mental torture, mental, I don't know, um, I had to have long conversations to, because there was a lot of anger still, and that's the thing, because if you get racially abused where you work or where you, where you do your practice, you, you often don't have the opportunity to speak about it. It's the same as being sexually abused at work or something, you often don't have, you just carry on and you just bury it inside. Then someone asks you to do something, it all comes out. And I think that was, for me, the thing about sometimes this is how uh, or Black or African or Caribbean or Asian or whatever people call themselves, people have to do. You have to sort of bury it and then um, and not deal with it because on a bigger level, you're in a minority within the institutions anyway. So it was good in that sense to be able to have those sorts of um, closed, well, with Roger there as well. So there's three of us and then Roger. And then to produce it, we actually had a designer as well, who was also another woman of color as well, you know, another black woman who, um, and she chose a lovely um, font, which is called diversity. Oh. I'm just wondering if we could get the quick book. Yeah, it's called diversity, and it's actually produced by people from all over the world. They've designed a letter each. I think that's the concept of it, and it, it was just brilliant. Was it called diversity? It's called diversity. Yeah. So we chose that to um, have on. That's that's the text. Yes, the text around the legacy. It's, it's very creative, and it, it, it each it's actually uh, free to download because a lot of fonts you have to pay for, but this one is created from people all over the world, and it's actually um, free to use. So that was um, that was really good. And no, I think we used a, a mixture of two, actually, two fonts, but the one that's, sort of, you know, that's sort of different is, uh, yeah. And these are the artists, you know, Kadisha Copley, and Jason Chan, Jason Chan, um, and writers. Um, and it was lovely to meet all these different, that's sort of my pictures. Um, that was a picture I did at college, and I was using a lot of my archival stuff because when I did this in 1985, it was like it's still relevant now because Ain't I a Woman? Um, that's come up again as a title of several other people's work as well. People have used it. It was coined by um, Sojourner Truth in her speech, Ain't I a Woman? to Congress in America anti-slavery, you know, abolitionist meeting. Uh, this is the, uh, Chin Wei, who's done the, um, I chose her because she is a commercial artist, a successful commercial artist who runs a gallery. She is Nigerian, and you know Nigerians are good business people. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and she, her first degree, actually, was in business and commerce. And then she became an artist. So she's got all that behind her. And she was part of the Doncaster um, bid push to become a more creative city because Doncaster now is a city. From, it's because, uh, Janet might know more about this because you worked on the, uh, the art bomb stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pretty much a whole arts course because it didn't really, there's no real connection or networking. So. Mm -hmm. In the past, like a couple of years since the lockdown, um, a few galleries 
the parts and pop up um, a lot more people and are connected in working together. Yeah, it's just really cool seeing it all kind of like simmer and come to life. Yeah, really exciting. And you worked with Chinway in Chinway's gallery. Yeah, sure. I worked in the uh, in the gallery there. Um, and this is Janet's yeah. work. Yeah, and this is so. Um, now this is so powerful emotionally. It's about her, her grandmother and the, the wording. And she's a writer. I mean, Zanet is a, doing a doctorate, so she's she's a very good writer. And it's it's very emotional. And it's from someone who it's that whole thing about people bringing luggage, you know, and then they, everything in it. And then once it goes, it goes. You know, it's gone. And she talks about bowls that were in the suitcase that broke one by one by the children, but they were very precious to the grand to her grandma. But once they broke, you know, and her grandma cried about the loss of them, you know, the sort of loss and, and upset about the the objects that you bring with you. And then writers at Chatterjee. Uh, she's she's quite an older writer as well. She's been writing for a long time, and then um, and a lot of these younger women as well. The younger people have got they're very um, savvy in selling their work as well. So now it's like you get your work online, you have an Instagram, you have YouTube videos, you have. So it's it's interesting from the older artists to the younger ones, you know, like the the differences. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just been a bit a really interesting journey for me to to meet a, you know to meet all these different people, to find different people, to negotiate with them as well. How do you write to artists? I actually upset Jade once <laughs> uh, because I had to write to her through her agent, and that was another thing about me going through people's agents rather than being able to uh, go through to them directly. And and um, and then I did write to her because she's so busy. I mean, she's quite famous, Jade Monster, but because she she grew up in Yorkshire, she's based in Yorkshire. So I wanted we wanted her to be part of it as well. And um, isn't and that she, hasn't she just sued the tape or something? Like that? Yeah, she's she sued the tape or something for racism <laughs> and. Uh, she was actually exhibited in York because that's where I got her contact from with York. She had an exhibition there. And then also she's changed. So her early work, she's changed a lot from that. But she did actually allow us to use this image. So we this is all we've got from Jade because obviously she's she's quite famous and she does charge a lot of money now for doing what she does. So we had a small remittance to pay every artist. Um, to contribute, um, which you know was good, and then um, another artist who doesn't live in Yorkshire anymore, but we included her was um, Gretchen Sanningford because she produces such lovely work, and she's a really interesting person because she's lived in the, she's from the Caribbean originally, but she's her partner was African, so she's ended up. Uh, spending time in the Sudan as well. And she she was there when there was actually a lot of trouble. So she, she almost got blown up, but you know, had to flee the country. And, um, and she was so, uh, and she ended up um, connecting with Chinway and now they've got a relationship going as well. So I think that's quite good as well. To see how people have used, maybe the little bit of publicity we've given them, you know, and, um, creating partnerships and relationships.